right so uh, we are going to discuss hydrogen atom problem um, and this is also applicable for hydrogen like ions hydrogen like ions means uh, helium ion okay he plus lithium ion la2 plus right uh, like that we have uh, uranium uh, 91 plus right all these ions right etc etc they consist of only one electron and one nuclei one nucleus okay therefore all these ions right are uh, are called as hydrogen like ions so the uh, system that we are going to discuss is hydrogen atom not only hydrogen atom it is also applicable for hydrogen like ions okay now so uh, let me consider uh, some ion or hydrogen atom itself where you have two body one is nucleus the other one is electron a nucleus charge let it be plus z e if it is hydrogen atom charge is 1 so hydrogen atom means nucleus charge is plus e electron charge is minus e but since i am uh, writing general expression okay so uh, if if you take other ions hydrogen like ions the nuclear charge will change therefore in general let me take the nucleus charges plus e z e okay nucleus charges plus e z e electron charge is minus e let the distance between the electron and the nucleus be r remember here r is not constant r is also a variable okay then uh, last class we discussed that uh, this problem in which the entire hydrogen atom will move so uh, you have nuclear coordinates and you also have electron coordinates okay but the uh, if you take nuclear coordinate and electron coordinates as such the wave function depends on six coordinates right whenever wave function depends on six coordinates or more than three coordinate it is not possible to solve the schrodinger equation okay so we have to do uh, something uh, to make the wave function depends only on three coordinate or below three okay yeah it is possible uh, in mathematics what we have to do we have to transfer the coordinates okay so i am changing the coordinates uh, from nuclear coordinate electron coordinate to center of mass coordinate and relative coordinate okay uh, how to make this change that we discussed already so i am not going to do that so we you know very well how to do that now uh, you also know that center of mass coordinate okay or the motion associated with the center of mass coordinate is called translational motion and the motion associated with the relative coordinate okay is called relative motion okay this is translational motion and this is relative motion for translational motion we take the entire mass of the atom entire mass means mass of the nucleus plus mass of the electron for relative motion we take only reduced mass that reduced mass corresponds to one particle okay so now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to make an assumption here what is the assumption the assumption is that i'm going to uh, keep the center of mass point as such i'm going to fix the center of mass point so center of mass point not going to change therefore center of mass coordinate remains same therefore we are going to eliminate translational motion okay it is an assumption we, we are right uh, we can so because we are not interested on translational motion we have already discussed uh, about translational motion in in an extensive manner under 1d 2d 3d box problem so here we are going to focus only on relative motion so for that purpose i am going to assume that center of mass point is fixed okay so uh, there is no translational motion right therefore the only motion that is considered here is the relative motion relative motion okay is also called as electronic motion right because you know very well uh, the relative mass mu okay what is relative uh, what is a uh, reduced mass for relative motion we consider reduced mass reduced mass is equal to mass of the nucleus into mass of the electron divided by sum of mass of nucleus plus electron and you know very well nucleus mass is so heavy compared to electron therefore if you compare mass of the nucleus and mass of the electron mass of the electron is very large therefore you can neglect mass of electron suppose if i neglect mass of electron then you will get mn mass of the nucleus mass of the electron in the numerator 
in the denominator we have mass of the nucleus so nucleus mass nucleus mass cancel so what i'm saying is reduced mass is roughly or, or almost almost equal to mass of the electron so the relative motion is nothing but the motion of electron that's why this motion is called electronic motion okay now uh, let me go to the next page so so now our focus is uh, only on electronic motion not the uh, total motion okay i'm not going to discuss total motion because total motion of atom involve translation as well as electronic our focus is only on electronic motion now okay now so what is electronic motion for electronic motion the time independent schrodinger equation can be written as he into psi e equal to e e into psi e why i put subscript e because it is an electronic motion that's why so electronic hamiltonian electronic wave function electronic energy and electronic wave function and you know very well this is the simplest form of schrodinger equation and here the wave function depends on the three coordinate spherical polar coordinates r theta and phi i wrote directly in spherical polar coordinate so wave function depends on r theta and phi part okay and here e is electronic energy keep this in mind then uh, before uh, going to solve the schrodinger equation let me give you uh, this particular uh, information here what is the range for r r will go from 0 to infinity and what is the ra range for theta theta can take value from 0 to pi and what is the range for phi phi range is 0 to 2 pi 360 degree okay and remember theta is called the azimuthal angle and phi is called the polar angle the quantum number that arises out of theta is called azimuthal quantum number and the quantum number that arises out of phi is called the polar angle okay yeah now uh, what is the hamiltonian you know very well hamiltonian is nothing but kinetic energy plus potential energy the expression for kinetic energy is minus h bar square by 2 mu into del square plus potential energy v and here remember this is very important potential energy of hydrogen atom or hydrogen like ion depends only on the radial coordinate okay whenever potential energy depends only on radial coordinate we call it is this problem as central potential problem central potential problem or spherically symmetric potential problem spherically symmetric potential okay so remember uh, in in the case of hydrogen atom or hydrogen like ions potential energy is a central potential energy because it depends only on radial coordinate okay then and here this del square is called laplacian operator we can write laplacian operator del square as 1 by r into dou square by dou r square into r plus 1 by r square into uh, lambda square it is called legendrian operator it is called legendrian operator uh, legendrian operator okay so del square this is the expression for del square keep this in mind and what is potential energy potential energy uh, is nothing but the attractive potential energy between the nucleus and the electron because nucleus and electron carry charge now okay and since they carry opposite charge so there will be an attraction so the potential energy is the attractive potential energy okay also called coulombic potential energy so what is the coulombic potential energy uh, charge of the nucleus is plus is at e charge of electron is minus e divided by 4 pi epsilon naught you know very well epsilon naught is the So, uh, potential energy is minus z e square by 4 pi epsilon naught. Epsilon naught is the permittivity of vacuum, and uh, we have uh, the distance r. 
this is the expression for coulombic potential energy now what i'm going to do in the place of del square i'll go i'll put this expression and in the place of potential energy i'll put this okay if i substitute these two here i'll get an expression like this okay see minus h bar square by 2 mu as uh, is, is here and in the place of del square i'll write this what is that 1 by r uh, dou square by dou r square into r uh, plus 1 by r square into the legendary n okay then in the place of potential energy potential energy is minus z e square by 4 pi epsilon naught r so i'll substitute that here so you'll get minus z e square by 4 pi epsilon naught into r okay uh, bracket curve bracket and here we have the electronic function equal to electronic energy into electronic function okay so i have introduced uh, what is called the uh, legendary n here now listen carefully since potential energy depends only on radial coordinate okay we can separate this electronic wave function electronic wave function depends on r theta and phi so you can separate the electronic wave function into radial function and angular function this separation is possible because potential energy depends only on r now okay so by i'm applying the method of separation of variables okay so according to which at the wave function psi which depends on r theta phi can be separated into two part one depends on radial coordinate it is called radial function capital r is called function small r is the coordinate so radial function and another function is angular function which is y and you know very well this function is nothing but spherical harmonics okay and we can write simply this as capital r into capital y i'll take this as equation number one now what i'm going to do i'll substitute this here in the place of psi and in the place of psi here so ry ry i'll bring this ry here ry here ry here okay if i bring this r into capital r into y here listen this operator dou square by dr square will operate only on capital r therefore capital y uh, can be treated as a constant so you can take it out okay so let me do it in the next step see see here i have see in the place of psi i put this capital r in capital y bring this capital r and capital y here okay so this operator operates only on capital r so i'll keep the capital r as such and i brought this y out okay because y is constant here then plus second term uh, i'll bring this capital r capital y here legendary operator legendary operator op operate only on angular part therefore capital r is treated as constant so you, you, you keep it out right so r by r square legendary n into y okay minus similarly you have to multiply here so psi is r into y capital r into capital y if i multiply here i'll get capital r capital y equal to uh, here also you put capital r into capital y okay so this is the uh, equation after substitution now what i'm going to do is that uh, i'll multiply uh, yeah uh, before begin with listen you know very well uh, l square it is called the total square of the total angular momentum operator square of the total angular momentum operator equal to minus h bar square times legendary n so they they commute with each other okay commute with each other means the eigen function of l square is also eigen function of legendary n operator okay so uh, so if we apply l square to the uh, spherical harmonic function y i'll will get the same function y multiplied by some eigen value and this is called the uh, square of the total angular momentum this is the square of the total angular momentum it is an eigen value similarly if you apply legendary n operator because they commute okay if you apply legendary n operator on y i'll get the same function multiplied by the eigen value what is the eigen value see l square equal to l square equal to minus h bar square into lambda square okay or legendary n right so if you want legendary n bring the h bar square down okay in the le uh, left hand side what is the eigen value for l square eigen value for l square is l into l plus 1 into h bar square and if i bring this h bar here minus h bar square equal to del square h bar square h bar square cancel therefore del square or legendary n is nothing but minus l into l plus 1 so this is the eigen value for the legendary n okay so when i apply del square on y i'll get minus l into l plus 1 into y why i am saying this because in the last step 
see we have this uh, quantity okay if you apply legendary n on y you will get same function y multiplied by the eigen value what is the eigen value of legendary n the eigen value of legendary n is minus l into l plus 1 now i am going to incorporate i will going to incorporate this in equation number 2 okay before that before that you know very well this y it is called spherical harmonic function you can separate this into two part one is theta part the other one is phi part okay uh, these things we have already discussed and you know what is the solution for this under rigid rotor problem we discussed all these things okay so the wave function y or the angular function y can be given as the normalization constant square root of 2l plus 1 by 4 pi into l minus absolute value of m factorial divided by l plus absolute value of m factorial into the associated legendar uh, polynomial associated legendar polynomial into e power i m l into phi okay so this is you know already okay keep this in mind now uh, what i'm going to do is that uh, i'll substitute this uh, equation in uh, equation number 2 so therefore the equation number 2 will become see here equation number 2 will become in the place of see what i did let me show you see in the equation number 2 in the place of uh, uh, legendary n okay that is lambda square into y right if i apply lambda square on y i'll get minus l into l plus 1 into y i'll get minus l into l plus 1 into y so if i substitute this here i'll get i'll keep all this all the remaining terms as such in the place of uh, uh, else lambda square into y we got the eigen value now minus l into l plus 1 into y minus the other uh, quantities keep it as such now what i'm going to do I'm going to divide or I'm, I'm sorry I'm going to multiply throughout by small r divided by capital Y so if I multiply what will happen here if I multiply here small r small r cancel capital Y capital Y cancel so I'll get minus h bar square by 2 mu this become t square by dr square capital small r into capital R minus plus into minus become minus L into L plus 1 r square okay here this capital Y capital Y cancel and it will get small r so I'll take the small r and I'll multiply the small r with the capital R as such I'm keeping this r square term as such don't cancel these two don't cancel these two okay this just keep because I want to introduce a new function uh, in the place of uh, r into capital R so I want r into capital R in all the places that's why uh, you need not cancel these two okay keep this term as such then similarly here minus z e square by 4 pi epsilon naught r okay here also uh, if you multiply by small r you'll get a small r here and if you divide by capital y you'll get uh, y y cancel so you'll have only small capital r similarly you have to multiply in the right hand side also so y y cancel small r into capital r you'll get now what i'm going to do i'm going to define a new function okay uh, new function that is u let me do it next page yeah so I'm introducing a new function u right that u also depends on radial coordinate okay which is nothing but small r into capital R so in the previous equation wherever small r and capital R is there you just replace by u so if you, re if you replace it you will get this expression minus h bar square by 2 mu d square u by dr square minus l into l plus 1 by r square into u minus all other terms okay see on the what i did i just replaced the small r into capital r into into the new function u okay we got this expression now listen i just uh, uh, modify this expression i'll just rearrange this equation expression listen what i'm doing here i'll keep the first term as such minus h bar square 2 mu d square dr square i'll keep this one as such and if i multiply this here i'll get minus into minus become plus okay plus uh, what will get what will I get is l into l plus 1 by uh, r, r square will be there and we are multiplying by h bar square 2 mu so we will get 2 mu in the denominator and h bar square will in the in the numerator and I will take u as common okay I will take u as common u as common here then similarly here we have uh, minus z e square by 4 pi epsilon naught r u into electronic energy into u okay I just rearranged it now listen this is a very very important term uh, we have to 
uh, focus on that what is that this is you know very well this is coulombic potential energy which you know already what is this term this term corresponds to centrifugal potential energy so this these two terms are potential energy term one is coulombic potential energy attractive potential energy the other one is actually uh, try to move the electron away from the nucleus centrifugal potential energy this is uh, attracting potential energy okay which try to keep the which try to bring the nucleus uh, sorry bring the electron towards the nucleus this tries to uh, keep the electron away from the nucleus okay so uh, the sum of these two potentials are called effective potential okay v effective so what is v effective v effective is nothing but centrifugal potential uh, plus the coulombic potential right if i plot these two right what will i get is it if i plot these two if i plot potential energy in y axis and uh, uh, r in x axis okay as you know very well here see as r increases r is in the denominator here as r increases uh, the centrifugal potential energy will decrease so centrifugal potential energy decreases as r increases what about here here also r is there but r is in the denominator if r increases okay this quantity will decrease mathematically decrease means negative and we have one more negative in front so negative or negative is positive that means this potential energy will increase right as r increases okay and what is the sum of these two sum of these two will appear like this so this is the uh, appearance of the effective potential energy keep this in mind so effective potential energy right as r increases effective potential decreases goes to the negative side and takes the minimum after that it will increase and uh, uh, as r goes to infinity this all this will reach zero okay yeah this is the point you should keep in mind then uh, what i'm going to do is that the next step we are, we are going to do some more uh, rearrangements and uh, we'll try to understand uh, the concept okay now what i'm going to do see in this expression in this expression i'm going to divide throughout by the electronic energy i'm going to divide throughout this expression by electronic energy so if i divide i'll get electronic energy term here here as well as here but while dividing by electronic energy i'm going to do uh, some uh, some i'm going to introduce some small terms so you should uh, watch this carefully minus h bar square by 2 mu e i have introduced electronic energy here d square u by dr square plus l into l plus 1 h bar square 2 mu i have introduced this electronic energy here into r square okay i didn't do anything here this is the term which is very very important see minus h z e square by 4 pi epsilon naught r is already there now i am dividing by electronic energy at the same time i am introducing a new term here h bar square by 2 mu to cancel this i have to multiply this by 2 mu by h bar square so that h bar square h bar square cancel mu mu cancel okay 2 to cancel i'll get only electronic energy because we are dividing by electronic energy so keep this in mind i am not only dividing electronic energy here i am introducing new terms okay it has some purpose we will discuss that later u equal to in the right hand side we have electronic energy into u electronic energy electronic energy cancels we will get only the term u right then what's the next step in the next step i am going to introduce a new constant see i am going to replace this quantity that is 2 mu e by h bar square minus 2 mu by h bar square as k square okay so i am replacing this 2 mu e by h bar square as k square therefore here i have h bar square by 2 mu therefore uh, you'll get 1 by k square right so i'll put 1 by k square in here d square by d square u by dr square and here uh, in the place of c here we have 2 mu e in the denominator i'll bring the h bar square here so 2 mu e by h bar square is equal to minus uh, is equal to minus k square so in the place of uh, 2 mu by h bar square i'll put minus k square so minus will go here so minus into l into l plus 1 h bar square uh, yeah this this won't come sorry yeah this h bar square uh, uh, won't come i'm sorry yes yeah right because uh, 2 mu e by h bar square right uh, will give this k square so that h bar square won't come 
So, what is the next step? So, the next one here uh, instead of this 2 mu e by h bar bring, bring this h bar square down. So, instead of 2 mu by h bar square I will put k square. Okay, We should put minus 1 by k square minus or minus become plus. So, I directly wrote plus z e square by 4 pi epsilon naught r into 1 by k square and keep this term as such mu equal to mu. Okay. Now, now what I am going to do is that Okay. Uh, we do a few more steps here. Yeah. Uh, this h bar square won't come. I'm sorry. Yeah. So uh, now I'll introduce a new uh, variable rho. Listen, this r is a, a distance actually, a radial variable distance. The distance has uh, dimension. Okay. The unit of k is one by dim one by length. So, this is length, this is 1 by length. So, if you multiply this r by k, right, you will get a new variable which is dimensionless variable. Okay, here remember rho is a dimensionless variable. Dimensionless variable. Okay, why we are interested on dimensional vari variable? Because solving sh uh, a second order differential equation will be easier if you take uh, dimensionless variables. Okay, so what I am going to do? is that I am going to uh, uh, replace wherever uh, uh, r is there I have to put uh, rho I am to introduce rho. So, what is r r equal to rho by k okay here see rho is equal to k into r I can write r is equal to rho by k. So, here I have r square term so r square is rho square by k square so I will put rho square by k square k square is anyway constant I will take it out this k square and this k square cancel. So, you will get simply d square u by d rho square okay, plus the second term I will come here. Uh, what is k into r is rho. So, k into r square is rho square okay, plus uh, here z e square by uh, you just multiply 2 mu z e square by 4 pi epsilon naught h bar square r okay, in the place of uh, here we have uh, notice this carefully here I have 1 by k square term, here I have r term. Okay, You just take k square as k into k, r into k become rho. So, we have one rho here and one more k will be there. So, that k you should retain, k into rho into u equal to u. Now, I will bring these terms to the right hand side. Okay, If I bring it to the right hand side, I will get an expression like this. I will get an expression like this. d square u by d rho square equal to Okay, uh, here we have u. Uh, here we have uh, function with u. So if you bring it to the right hand side, you can take u as common. Okay, this is if you take u common, I'll get one here, one, and this term here I have minus. So if it come to the right hand side, it will become plus, and this term it is here plus, so it will become minus. So you will get an expression like this: one plus l into l plus one by rho, rho square. I'm sorry, minus two mu z e square by. 4 pi epsilon naught h bar square k into 1 by rho uh, into u. right? So, this is the, uh, the equation which we are going to solve, but before going to solve, uh, let me make this equation even simpler, so that uh, uh, the further uh, uh, solving this problem become very, very easy. So, what I am going to do is that put uh, this quantity that is uh, 2 mu 2 is a constant mu is a constant for a for a for a given atom okay whether it is hydrogen atom or hydrogen like ion whatever may be the system for a given system mu is constant okay you know real mu is nothing but mass of the electron right mu is nothing but mass of electron which is uh, which is a constant z for a given species z is constant e is electronic charge which is a constant divided by 4 pi epsilon naught is a constant. Okay, h bar square is also a constant. And what about the k? k is also a constant here. Okay, so k is also a constant here. So 2 mu z e square by 4 pi epsilon naught h bar square uh, k. Right, all these quantities. Uh, one second, let me check it. So, I just replaced it. 
and uh, in the place of this I'll put a new constant I'm going to introduce this as a new constant called rho naught just note note down this the all these thing, quantities are constants okay so I'll replace this by a new constant called rho naught so that this entire term become rho naught and we have only rho in the denominator so this can be written as therefore the above equation second order differential equation can be written as d square u by d rho square equal to uh, 1 plus l into l plus 1 by rho by rho square okay l into l plus 1 by rho square minus and this become rho naught rho naught and we have a rho in the denominator rho u okay so you'll get a simplified expression and this is the expression called uh, radial uh, part of the wave function a radial function okay this is called the radial equation radial equation right which we need to solve okay now how to solve this listen uh, we can solve this um, by uh, first five will will solve this by by first considering the asymptotic uh, uh, nature of the solution first we'll find out the asymptotic solution then we'll find out the solution in between okay here uh, listen carefully uh, here uh, what is the asymptotic solution means listen uh, at the nucleus r value is 0 okay when the electron moves away from nucleus r increases and r can go up to infinity okay so we have two uh, uh, things that we have to notify what is that what is the nature of the wave function remember rho is equal to k into r so when k when r approaches 0 automatically rho also approaches 0 so first we need to find out uh, what is the solution when r approaches infinity when r approaches infinity that means rho also approaches infinity when rho approaches infinity right what will be the uh, nature of the function u because we need to find out the function u similarly when r approaches 0 right that means rho approaches 0 when rho approaches 0 right what will be the nature of the wave function first we'll find out the nature of the wave function when r approaches infinity and r approaches 0 after that we'll find out what will be the uh, complete solution complete solution means okay in between 0 and infinity what will be the nature of the solution okay yeah so first we'll find out what is the nature of the solution when rho approaches infinity okay is yes, how to do that it is actually very simple one let me follow here uh, so we'll find out the solution right number one as rho approaches as rho approaches infinity right what will the nature of the wave function as rho approaches infinity what will be the nature of the function listen when rho approaches infinity see here we have rho in the denominator here also we have rho in the denominator when rho become infinity something by infinity becomes zero this becomes zero here also here rho naught is constant so when rho approaches infinity something by infinity this also become zero so these two term become zero therefore the above second order differential equation becomes d square u by d rho square equal to simply u okay equal to u right and uh, uh, this equation it is a simple second order differential equation for this you can write the solution directly what is solution u uh, which depends on rho equal to uh, we have two terms that is a into e power rho this is one solution plus b into e power minus rho this solution we have discussed already in some in some other problems Okay, this is actually a simple differential equation second order differential equation if you solve this you'll get the solution like this now see we have e power rho term and e power minus rho term you know very well as rho approaches infinity okay the wave function should approach zero the wave function should become zero right listen this is uh, uh, if you uh, if you analyze these two functions 
here we have e power plus rho if rho approaches infinity you will get e power infinity e power infinity is also infinity so this function right goes to infinity as rho approaches infinity but what we want is as rho approaches infinity u should approach zero function should approach function should vanish okay but this will never give make the function vanish because i have e power plus rho therefore the only term uh, that is uh, uh, that is uh, well fit for the equation is e power minus rho okay so this is the only uh, func uh, function that will take care of the solution at the when when rho approaches infinity so the one function for u is you need not write this constant at all okay it is proportional to e power minus rho so this is the function when rho approaches this is the nature of the function when rho approaches infinity similarly what will happen if rho approaches approaches zero when rho approaches zero see i'll come to the second order equation again when rho approaches zero listen i have a rho in the denominator here also rho is in the denominator but here i have rho square listen when denominator become small as rho approaches zero zero means it become very very small when denominator approaches small the value become very very large okay the, here we have rho here we have rho square so when when uh, when when rho decreases when rho approaches zero rho square term become very very small compared to rho since rho square is in the denominator so this quantity become very very large as rho approaches zero and this is the dominating quantity compared to this so i am going to consider only the dominating uh, term okay see as rho approaches zero this will increase this also will increase no doubt in that but the increase is more dominant here because i have rho square term therefore i am going to neglect these two so i can write the differential equation as d square u by d rho square okay d square u by d rho square equal to uh, equal to l into uh, let me write here l l into l plus 1 okay uh, one second yeah l into l plus 1 by rho square into u you will get an equation like this okay now uh here uh, i like to give this information what is the solution for this okay the solution for this is the solution for this is i'm going to give the solution directly okay if you want you can check it okay the solution for this is u rho equal to some constant c into rho power minus l plus Uh, some constant d into rho power l plus one, okay, l plus one. So I have introduced the wave functions here. Okay, this is the nature of the function when rho approaches zero. But here, as rho approaches zero, see this carefully. As rho approaches zero, right? What will happen is that the c into c into rho power minus l, rho power minus l. Okay. listen when rho approaches zero what will happen to this function uh, rho power minus l can be written as c by rho power l okay when rho approaches zero rho is in the denominator now when rho approaches zero okay uh, this term become infinity okay it will go to infinity right if rho approaches zero right zero is in the denominator right something by zero is infinity therefore this part of the wave function goes to infinity when rho approaches zero but we don't want the function to go to infinity okay as rho approaches zero the wave function should vanish because these two are the termini one is uh, one is zero the other one is infinity as rho in approaches infinity the wave function should vanish similarly when the rho approaches zero then also the wave function should vanish right so this is not the acceptable one what about the other one so we have d rho power l plus 1 as rho approaches zero the wave function becomes zero so d rho power l plus 1 as rho approaches zero this will approach zero therefore 
among the two this is not the acceptable function this is not acceptable this is the acceptable function therefore you can write the wave function as so as rho approaches 0 the acceptable function is proportional to rho power l plus 1 okay so we have, we have found out the wave function when rho approaches uh, uh, 0 and where rho approaches infinity okay therefore uh, the complete solution can be given as you know very well this is not the complete solution okay these two that is rho power l plus 1 and e power minus rho these two are solutions okay at the asymptotic position that is as rho approaches infinity and rho approaches 0 what is the nature of the wave function in between for this you need to find out the complete solution complete wave function so the complete solution right u of rho can be written as okay a equal to uh, this is e power minus rho this will take care of the solution when rho approaches infinity into rho power l plus 1 this is the nature of the wave function when rho approaches 0 and we need to introduce one more function that will take care of the function uh, in between 0 and infinity okay let me introduce that function as v v which also depends on rho which also depends on rho so this is my complete solution but right now we don't know what is the exact nature of this function v of rho for this what i'm going to do is i'm going to differentiate this okay two times and i'm going to substitute that in the uh, differential equation second order differential equation and uh, i'm going to solve that equation to find out the v okay so uh, let me continue this in the next class right uh, I stop here.